So it's been a little bit, uh, didn't really get many uploads this weekend. But that being said, we are back with another video today. And I wanted to give you guys an updated team build. So basically the team is at core, kind of the same thing with a few additions uh, here and there, changing things up a little bit. And I wanted to show that off to you guys today. So we're going to be going over each player individually, how they've been playing for me, and what I think, if they're worth getting or not. So starting off with Alexander Ovechkin, like I said before, he's just an absolute force on the puck, just an absolute monster on the ice. Has just one of the craziest shots that I've ever used in the game. Uh, the one thing that I'm starting to notice a bit more about with uh, Ovi himself is just his ability to get open on the ice. And that being said, like just carrying it in the zone with him and I find that uh, he's just not really the greatest at carrying it in the zone. I mean, give him an open shot on the net and he's going to score, but... Uh, it's getting him that open shot on that, that's a little bit issue. I think he's valued roughly at about 175,000 coins right now. Uh, so that is a little bit high in my opinion. I think Ovech can be worth 150,000 to 140,000 if you could afford him. Uh, obviously you're paying for the name. Um, big hit guy, definitely can throw the body very well. He's pretty quick. Um, but overall, yeah, I mean, if you guys got the coins laying around, you need a right-handed sniper, which is an absolute dominant force on the ice, then I would say Ovechkin is definitely a good pickup for you guys and definitely worth the money. Next down is Patrice Bergeron. So this guy is uh, just an absolute monster in the center draws. I mean, 90 face-offs. You're probably not going to lose very many with him if you know what you're doing in the dot. Um, but Bergeron, I mean, now he's just starting to light it up for me. Before, uh, and in previous years, Bergeron has never been really a big scorer. Um, for me, I think that's just because he's more of a defensive player than anything else that wins draws very well. Probably one of the best, if not the best, defensive player in the NHL, him with Jonathan Taves. So I think that's a really good, uh, definitely very good to have as a centerman. You can count on him to get back. You can count on him to play his position very well at passing the puck very well, winning the draws, getting in the dirty areas. Bergeron, you know, overall average player, I would say, other than the defensive aspect where it makes him just probably one of the best cards in the game. Uh, I think Bergeron is about 40,000 coins right now is I think what he goes for. So 40,000 coins for the best face-off man in the game, I think, is definitely a steal. Um, you're going to be winning draws with him and is some some guy that you can count on to pass the puck and be back on the, back on the, on the four check and everything. Uh, is definitely a crazy feature for him. So Bergeron is worth 40k. I would say if you guys have that laying around, you're definitely going to want to snag him up as he is going to prove to time and time again to be worth it for you guys. Now on to the man, the myth himself, the Russian Rocket, Pavel Bure. And I don't even know where to start with this card. Uh, he's played six games for me, and he's gotten four goals in those six games. Just an absolute monster. Like, man, I, I would say probably Bure almost... He, he rivals Ovechkin's shot, if not a little bit better than that. He is 93 on a shot, but where Burray really comes in play is his skating. He has a 94 skating, uh, 95 speed with a 95 acceleration, and with the synergies I have uh, with the uh, the S synergy, which I'm not entirely sure it is, it makes that even faster. So Burray himself is just an absolute like the quickest card in the game, hands down with those things if I could get rocket skates on him that would be so much better uh, but man like carrying him with Burray he's gonna snipe the top corner every time no problem in the, in the world you know probably one of the best all overall rounded cards in the game the problem with Burray is he runs about 350,000 coins and I believe at this point in time that is the most expensive card in the game he's almost 150,000 more than Sidney Crosby and that's 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 pretty crazy when you think about it but uh definitely worth it definitely faster than crosby is better shot better hands better checking better defense like overall better card than crosby um 350 000 is a very steep price to pay if your team is finished and you're looking for a guy that's going to be the standout on your team and you have 350k laying around then man honestly beret is the card for you but is not going to be for everybody. If you're going to get lucky and pack him like I did, then you're going to be in a very good situation. But other than that, it's going to be very hard to get him. But man, if you do, he is going to be so worth it for you. Just an absolute monster. Now coming up on our second line, we have Tyler Sagan. So again, Sagan, best shot on my team, I would say. Better than Bure. Pure goal scorer for me. That's all he does. He gets assists every now and then, but just an absolute pure goal scorer. Um, and I, I say he's better than Burry's shot because the shots that Sagan gets and goes in are always clutch shots. Like, he always comes in big for me when you're not really expecting him to be there. His shot goes in somehow. He just beats the goalie. And it's so quick. 
Um, so, I mean, Bure has the better statistical shot than Sagan, but Sagan has an actual better gameplay shot than Bure, uh, which is very strange to say, but it's just how it is this year. Uh, man, again, just an absolute monster on the ice. Uh, his checking is a little bit low, but uh, I think that with his upgrades this year, he's definitely going to get a better card. So definitely be on the lookout if you can get yourself a Sagans at some point in time. He's worth about 70,000 coins. Um, and if you have that laying around for a forward uh, that you want to start building your team around, I think Tyler Sagan is a great place to start. Um, and he's very quick as well, too. So 90 speed, 90 acceleration. Uh, definitely 90 overall for skating. And shot is just a 91 pretty much across the board. So Sagan is, is a great player for 70k. I think he's, uh, you know, he'll probably go down another 20k or so and be about a 50k player in about a couple weeks to a month um, if the market doesn't start stabilizing at all. Um, but for now, like, Sagan is crazy. Like, definitely one of the best players I have on my team by far. Next up is Jonathan Taves. And this guy is one guy that is definitely underpriced, I think, out of the team. He comes in at 21,000 coins. So not very expensive for Taves, and you're getting 83 faceoff, which is a little bit low for him. But again, defensively for a centerman, this is exactly the guy that you want. He's an average player everywhere else, 86 and 87 for speed and acceleration. So not the quickest player on the ice, but with the uh, the S synergy, and I honestly can't remember what it is right now. But with that synergy, it gives him a little bit of a boost to his skating. But you're not getting Taves for his offensive production. You're getting him for his defensive capabilities and his ability to win faceoffs. And man, does he ever excel in those categories. Like, he is getting back on the back check. He is there to intercept passing lanes. Like, the guy is everywhere. He gets in the corners. And this is, like, without you even controlling him. So this is just AI on him. And he just does amazing things on the ice for you. And for 21,000 coins, I think it's an absolute steal, an absolute bargain for Taves. Definitely worth it, in my opinion. And I think that if you guys don't have a Taves on your team, go out and get one for 21k. Save up, play 20 games, save up. And get yourself a Taves because he is definitely worth it. And his other line mate here, Jamie Ben, is just a monster on the ice. Like Tyler Sagan, just a crazy shot, super fast, very big body. He can do pretty much everything that needs to be done, even defensively, where he is a little bit lacking, but you don't really notice it in game. Ben is a monster. He just comes in. He's so clutch for you. So you can pretty much count on him in any place and time to get down in the corners, throw the body, you know, be very good for poke checking, which is very needed this year like overall just a very well-rounded card uh the problem with ben is that he is about 100,000 coins uh you're paying for that overall in that name 88 uh but man ben is definitely a player that is worth 100,000 coins in my books complete player good second line player i wouldn't run him first line um if uh, i mean my team first line is, is yeah it's like half a million coins right there but not everybody can afford a half a million coin first line but jamie ben is a perfect second line player for me and I think for 100,000 coins, I think he'll come down to about 80,000 or 70,000. I think that's when you guys need to get him. Uh, other than that, just a great player to have on your team. Now, a new acquisition for the team has been Taylor Hall. And what an absolute speed monster on the ice. He has 89 for skating, 91 for acceleration, and 93 for speed. And he also has just crazy shots with 90s and 88s across the board. Um, what isn't there to say about Hall that he can't do other than throw the body? And even in situations, he can throw the body. Just a crazy fast player, a very good offensive player, a very good offensive threat. And you definitely know that uh, he's fast when you feel him on the ice. He gets past people. He does crazy things that you wouldn't expect him to pull off. Taylor Hall for about, I think he's 20K, definitely worth the 20K to run as a winger and is a very good sniper to have. Next up is Joe Pavelski, a uh, little bit known. He has 84 for faceoffs as a right winger. So definitely one of the uh, little kind of cheats in the game that run him in the center there. Uh, Pavelski runs you about 20k and for an 84 faceoff man at 20k is definitely worth it He's better than Taves when it comes to offensive categories and a little bit less than Taves when it comes to defensive categories And he can win those faceoffs. So again, it's kind of the theme I run with centers on my team They don't have to be the best They have to be decent in faceoffs and be very good defensively and they'll fit in good on the team and Pavelski is definitely that for 20k I think it is good player to pick up for your team if not to run him in the center But to put him on the wing, he'll definitely come in clutch for you now up is Evgeny Malkin. So last team update that I had, he was on the first line. He's made his way down to the third line just because I didn't want to break up that line of Sagan and Ben and Taves. It was working really well for me. So I've moved Malkin down here and people might be crazy because I mean, Malkin is what, 120,000 or so. I'm running 120,000 coin card on my third line. 
is just absolutely insane. But again, like I said before, Malkin's very quick. He has an insane shot. He can throw the body. His defensive category is a little bit lacking, but just another complete card that you can count to do on everything on the ice. For 120,000 coins, I don't think he's exactly worth that. I would say wait till he gets to be around the 90 to 100,000 mark, because I think that is where he will probably end up. And I would say if you guys need a player at that point that is a complete player, definitely snag him up then. But other than that, just a crazy player to have. And to run him on your third line is insane because I get matched up against guys who are running 85s and 86s on the third line. So having 88s on my third line is definitely helpful. Fourth line here for the snow forwards now, we have our Temi Panarin, another new acquisition. Very fast, 88 skating, 80, uh, 92 acceleration and 90 speed. Um, very good shot, very good hands, and lacking in the defensive category completely. But he's 5'9 and 170 pounds, so what do you honestly... Or 5'11, sorry, and 170 pounds. So what do you honestly expect? Uh, just a pure offensive player, insanely fast, crazy shot, very good hands, but lacking defensively. But it doesn't matter. Uh, that's why you have this guy here, Nicholas Backstrom. Another <laughs> fener uh, centerman coming into that same theme that I run with the good defensive stat cats stat category why can i not speak right now good defensive category and statistics and uh definitely uh just in a you know i'd say he's probably about an above average player but uh panarin is going to run you about 20k backstrom about 40k uh so about 60k tied up between these two players but they work very well on the two lines together and i run johnny goudreau down there as well too another guy who is just complete and complete offense and uh, no defense pretty much on the checking category. But, I mean, Goudreau's played some pretty, uh, pivotal roles in games for me. Um, keep in mind, he is 5'9 and five, uh, 157 pounds. So he might be a little bit light for you, but just an absolute crazy card. Super fast, very good shot, very good hands. Somebody you can count on in situations to get back on plays, surprisingly. So next up is the defensive core of this team. And starting with Drew Doughty, like I said last time, just a great defensive player. He's definitely very fast, has good hands, and very good defense. The shot is about average, um, but he comes in clutch defensively, and that's what you need out of your defenseman, is to just be defensemen. Um, sometimes jump in and be offensemen there, but for the most part, you want them to be defensemen, and Doughty does that for me day in and day out. Just a crazy card. Run with Doughty as he runs you about 100k. I think that he'll probably drop down another 10 to 20k when the market stabilizes out a little bit. And I'd say that's probably when you want to get him. Hedman, on the other hand, again, a player that, you know, I would like to replace. I just don't have the time or patience to do it right now. Uh, he's coming in about 35k. He's 6'6 and 223 pounds. So he's huge, which is good. But he's sluggish and his shot sucks. It's very bad. It is not accurate at all. Very powerful, but not accurate at all. And for me, that doesn't come in very good as a defenseman. Um, keep in mind, your play style is probably going to be different than mine. So I like to cycle with the, the points a lot and using the defenseman to actually gain scoring chances and to gain opportunities to score off of. That being said, Hedman really doesn't capitalize on that category because his shot is so low. Uh, if his accuracy was about an 84, 85, he would be yeah, probably one of the best defensemen in the game, but it's not. Uh, defensively though, just an insane card, and he's only worth 35k, so he's not bad. Next up is Alex Petrangelo. He comes in at about 25k for an 87 overall, which is not bad. Again, a little bit lacking in the shot, but he's got a little bit better accuracy than Victor Hedman himself. Defensive categories are all very good though, and he's very fast, so for about 25k, he is a great defenseman to have on your squad. Ryan Suter, another guy that I would also like to replace because of that shot accuracy is very low. I uh, just haven't really found anybody to replace him with. I'm thinking of P.K. Subban, but uh, we'll see as things continue to go forward. Suter's so about 10k, so he's very cheap. For So if you have a starting team and you want a good defenseman that's going to come in very solid for you, definitely Ryan Suter is the way to go. Chris Letang now, definitely, again, another defenseman with a little bit lacking of a shot, but he is super quick, and that's why he goes for so much. He's about 20k uh, right now to 25k, depending on when you can get him. Defensively, he's really good. That sucks at checking, but he's fast. He's got good hands, and that's why he's worth a lot is because of that speed. Um, shot is a little bit low for me again, under 80s for accuracy, but it is what it is with Latang. He's quick, he gets back, and that's why I have him on my team, and that's what he does for me. And finally, pairing it out is Roman Yossi. So, another defenseman that I don't really have anything bad to say about, other than, you know, he's a little bit slower compared to the other guys. Um, Yo, he has 86 acceleration, 87 speed. So he's about average on the speed category. Uh, shot is a 85, so it's definitely a it's it's better than the other guys. 82 and 83. Hands are very good. Checking is is about decent, 
and defensive category is good. So Yossi is the complete player and he runs in about 18k, believe it or not. So definitely another good player if you don't have a lot of coins and you want a good complete defenseman for your team that you can build around, Roman Yossi is your guy. And finally, the goalie, Pekka Rene. So again, what you guys are saying is Rene is whatever, but he works for me. He's 3,000 coins. He's big. He gets in front of the net. He blocks shots. He makes some questionable goals sometimes, but this is NHL. And we know that goals are going to go in that should not be going in. And Rene is a pretty good solid option for about 3K. He's not going to break the bank, and he's a good goalie. 6'5", uh, like I said, a big guy can get block the net up with the butterfly whatever you do don't use ben bishop because he's terrible for me but he might be great for you uh but rene has been a good cornerstone for me he's gotten a lot done for me i would like to upgrade him but i'm just waiting for better goalies to come out because i've heard some bad things about price um but until then rene is going to be the guy i'm going to be running with and yeah that's pretty much the team so that's the team let me know what you guys' team is looking like in the comments section below the video i would very like to hear it um, I want to thank you guys for watching though, this is just a quick video as I didn't really have a whole lot of time today to make any videos, so I figured I would give you guys a team build. 1.1 million coins is pretty good to have tied up in a team like three weeks into the game I would say. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching guys, if you did enjoy the video make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the post notification button, I don't know why I can't speak today, probably that time off, um, but hit the post notification button and so that way you can stay up to date with all the latest uploads on the channel, they come out every day always new NHL content to be seen. Uh, definitely like the video if you enjoyed and are still watching at this point. Uh, thanks for watching though. I will see you guys again tomorrow.